One of the amazing benefits of working for a second to none, top notch, incredible company like Swift Otter, and no, this is not a recruiting advertisement, is you get to work with some second to none, top notch, amazing people. And I am continually amazed at how incredible these people are, if I can use that word again. One funny marker of such artisans and craftspeople that really love their job is when getting into a new code base, it's like a kid in a candy store, but with a Dr. Evil aspect flipped in there. Except that we're not looking to destroy that code base. We're looking for all of the, the terrible elements of a code base that we can then fix. Again, it's like a kid in a candy store. And one of those very common things that we come across very often is security vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, with these type of applications, and I hate to say it, but security vulnerabilities are way too common. And in this video, we're going to dive into how a particular one and how to solve it. Yes, we're going to take our do our weekly knowledge by question and answer here, coming right up at you with this question. Take a look at this. You are in implementing content security policies and need to secure the following script in otterscript.phtml. Now we get with this block, get otter script. What approach do you take to do this? Ah, we have a question here. Now, as always, we're going to provide three different answers and it is up to you to select the correct answer. Let's see. Well, actually, before we go into the answers, I always like to do a quick plug for our Magento Adobe Commerce training courses. You see, if you are looking to get smarter with Magento to build better applications, to avoid writing security problems into your code, and unfortunately, it's pretty easy to do that. Don't ask me how I know. At the end of the day, uh, you might want a little bit of help. Help from a senior developer, or at least a developer a little bit more senior potentially than you. And in that case, we at Swift Auto have developed training material to help you get your game to that next level. Me and a, uh, another person, we have written a, and recorded videos for a lot of material to help you either up-level your game or prove you up-leveled your game through a certification, Adobe Commerce certification. So swiftauto.com, check us out there. Let's check out these answers. A, oh, it's a bunch of code here. Okay, all right, all right, we can sort through this. This is not a problem. Um, let's, let's, let's take a look here. So our first one is secure render, uh, secure script, um, block get header script or secure render. I see secure render is the same in each one of these. So we don't have to worry about that. Looks like we are having to worry about the method name. Secure script, render JavaScript, and render tag. Now, generally, we try not to have questions that have a memorization aspect in them. But this is just too important because, uh, yeah, under having these uh, these method names in our mind is absolutely critical. We, we cannot get around that fact. Uh, this is this is unbelievably important. So we chose to broke our own, break our own rule and throw at you one of these memorization-related questions. So... Uh, actually, when we posted this on LinkedIn, I believe uh, a good number got this answer correct. So way to go. I am not going to just, I'm not going to just sort through and, uh, and, and identify which one is correct because, again, this is a little bit more memorization style. And instead, we're going to jump in and look at a core code example with Xdebug. And I will show you exactly what happens. All right. Uh, so check this out right here. Uh, in the code, we have a secure render, render tag. And we basically are rendering, we have our script, our uh, the string that we want to render out here, and basically it's just some basic information to power up required JS. Now, calling render tag pops us over into this area. We have our tag data, which we see then a processors. So this tag data is coming in with our tag name attributes of content, et cetera. All, it's all fine and dandy. Uh, but then we have our processors. And in this case, we only have one processor. However, this is a connection point if you were, for some reason, wanting to add extra processors. Uh, maybe there's uh, something you need to filter out or make it better or just add some awesome sauce in there. Then you can do that here with this uh, adding into this processors here in secure HTML renderer. However, uh, let's jump in and see what happens here. So we have our this processors. We're going to jump in and call process tag. I'm going to drop a breakpoint here because inevitably I might skip past this accidentally and then I won't be able to show you what happens here. So uh, jump in here with process tag. Um, all right. So we are going to see if array key exists and then self tag meta. So let's see what this is. I'm guessing it is 
way to see uh, to filter out, say which uh, which tags will we need to apply content security policy to. And in this case, uh, we have script style image. Yes, definitely all the ones that have basic looks like a source uh, L, uh, attribute associated with them. So in this case, uh, we have our. Let me just double check here. Yep, uh, I didn't check the tag. Let's see. What was the tag name? Yeah, the, it was a script. Okay. I figured, all right, so we're gonna see our policy ID. Um, pull that out, we're gonna get the remote hosts out of here, uh, which we can see is pulled in through our the attributes as well. Our remotes, actually there are no remotes here in this case. Uh, and then we're gonna plop this down. If we had remotes, we, we're gonna add them to the collector because remember, content security policy is rendered out as headers on the page, which is kind of weird. It's like we have to render the content out first and then we render can have the information to render the content security policy, but that's the way it works. And this allows us to be able to do that. So it's collected and added into the header uh, collector. Uh, and then we can, um, it's continued to be processed. And obviously we can put a hash in there as well. And at that point, our tag data is returned. I believe it's untouched. I don't think it's making any changes here, but we can render, run to our tag render and we can drop through this. Uh, and it will assemble this tag for us. So instead of just dropping a script in there, we should always be using uh, this render tag right here. We can set the tag name, the attributes, what text goes in there, et cetera. All of that is done, very easy to do. And honestly, there's no reason uh, why we shouldn't be using this all the time for injecting our scripts. Well, if we are including a external or like a rendered out script. So check this out. Here is the correct answer. Uh, in this case, so instead of just rendering block get otter script, we're going to just run it through this filterer, this this tool that we have here. And as a result, you are able to com can maintain compliance with content security policy and potentially have uh, control over uh, things like uh, maybe adding extra filters or par uh, processing power in there. So there is your knowledge bite for this week. And I hope you found that helpful. Look forward to next week.